So, anyone who is a regular viewer of this channel most likely knows that when I say I'm going to make a video of me doing something or on a specific subject, I normally do not. I either completely forget or just don't feel like making a video, so I do not. And then I might, if you're lucky, come after and show what I've done just to make you people mad that I did it without you. This is one of those situations. You can't really see it. Let me see if I can get this light on the camera. That does nothing, does it? It does something. I got this really large LG air conditioner to fit in the window here. You can see it's got that. Now this unit actually has, has a drain plug that you can pull out there, but this one actually had a drain plug on the very bottom that I could remove, but it had to be unscrewed from the inside. See it there? This fits quite like a glove in this window. I mean, really tightly. I don't have any curtains, skirts, accordions, whatever you call them for the sides. But that's not a problem. I'm just going to get some foam to wedge in there. Okay, so as you know, that unit is a 240 volt unit. So I had to run a 240 volt circuit to the room that I put it in. So this is our junction box here. It's got this orange SO cable. This is not an extension cord. This is SO cable. 240 volt, it's got three wires, the red, the ground, or the red, the black, and the white, and then it's also got a ground. I don't know what the hell that was. So you have 120 volts on each leg. Anyway, you can see that there's no cover on this box. I'm going to put the cover back on the box, but I'm going ahead and ran this cable over here, over across the polybutylene piping. Oh, top of notch quality video here. Here we go. Just kind of strung it across here. You can see it goes up in there. So here you can see how tightly this thing fits in this window. I have this nice, uh, you can see that. There. Fits really tightly. Now one thing I wish that this thing had is some holes here. You know, some of them have holes so you can put the screws in, because I don't want this like, window to pop up and this thing to fall out. This thing is heavy. Um, it should probably have some sort of a bracket, but it ain't going nowhere. So this is a 12,000 BTU. I'll show you the outlet I put in here. I just got a handy box screwed it here. This ain't going nowhere. It is on a stud. You can see. I did not press the button to turn that light on. It just did automatically. Interesting. This camera doesn't do that. It's just going, the SO cable It's just going through there. I think that's what it's called. This is a solid 14 gauge cable. This is only three wire. Uh, of course, two hots and a ground. It doesn't have a negative. Uh, I think this is called SO cable. I'm not sure. But either way, it's it's solid wire. It's not stranded. Which is what needs to be used. So, might not be the neatest job in the world, but I ain't going nowhere. It's not going to light on fire. And it works. I know what you're saying. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a 20 amp. That's a 220 volt 20 amps uh, outlet. Well, yes, it is. I don't know what else you're thinking. That's the that's a 220 volt 20 20 amp plug. Okay, 
All right, yes, yeah, so this is a 20 amp plug. It is on a 20 amp circuit, but the wiring is 14 gauge. For 20 amp wiring, you need to have 12 gauge. I don't know if that's the case with 240 volt. It might be more. I think it's 12. Okay, I understand. I don't care. Um, for one reason. This unit, uh, in cooling mode, only draws 5.5 amps. So 14 gauge is more than enough for 5.5 amps. 14 gauge is rated for, uh, the code allows 15. So 5.5 will be fine in cooling mode. I have no plans to use this in heating mode. I'm going to remove it in the winter. Quite honestly, I hate heat. Anything hotter than about 72, 73, and I'm uncomfortable. So I use it in air conditioning all the time anyway. But if I was going to use it in heat for an extended period of time, it should be fine. Because in heating mode, I think this thing draws like 15.6 or something amps. So, technically, as far as code goes, yes, that is overloading it. But, really, a 15 amp, uh, a 14 gauge conductor can handle 20 amps if it, if it can handle 20 amps just fine it's just the code doesn't allow you to because of insulation and all that other stuff and heat and all that plus connections as far as connections go with outlets but this is only a single outlet circuit so no it wouldn't be up to code if I was using this in heating mode to run 15.6 or whatever it is amps through it but it can more than safely handle that just fine but like I said, I'm not going to use it in heating mode anyway. I'm only going to use it in cooling mode. So here it is. As you can see, it's tightly in the window. I like the side discharge. I'm thinking of a lawnmower again. The side air duct instead of the one on top. Uh, you can adjust it. And no, this is not mold. This is just dirt. I need to take this front cover off and clean it. Another thing, these vents, it's got this useless vent back here that does nothing. Uh, you can open it up to clean your filter. Uh, I know the front of this thing is dirty. I didn't clean this front cover, but that's just dirt. That's not mold. Um, well, it's more dust than dirt. It's... Uh, it's been a while. I mean, I, I cleaned the air conditioner itself, the coils, and the unit itself thoroughly. So, we'll go ahead and turn it on. We got the remote, which I actually like the remote. I know, controversial subject as far as people who collect vintage air conditioners and all that go. Yes, as far as reliability goes, a uh, mechanical control is a lot better. But there are cases where I just like to set it at a certain temperature and it's going to keep it there. And plus, I like the remote because if I'm sitting, oh, if I, ow, if I don't kill myself, if I'm sitting here at my desk, I can't reach over there. And this is going to sound incredibly lazy. But with my other units, I took a stick and pushed the button. <laughs> Um, because I'm, I'm turning it on and off like every, every five minutes just because, well just because I can, because I'll set it at something and be comfortable there and then the next minute I won't be comfortable there even though it's set at the same thing, it, it's complicated. But I keep it at 68 most of the time and that's fine there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and turn it on and, oh it's because I, because I unplugged it. It's on 74 and heat. Okay, the heat's hot, that's fine. I don't really care about the heat, like mentioned. Uh, this thing is a degree off, by the way. Okay, the compressor's just kicked on. I believe it's on low fan. 
That's low fan, so it was on high fan. And the coils are already cold. This thing gets cold quickly. It is good as far as the charge of the refrigerant goes. It's not low or anything because uh, it wouldn't get cold that quickly. And it's very cold already, and it gets colder. Even though this is a modern, kind of cheaply made unit, it's an LG, but it's one of the good LGs. It's more of a Gold Star LG than an actual LG. Gold Star LG. LG stands for Lucky Gold Star, I think, something like that. But it's the same company as Gold Star. If you're wondering what happened to Gold Star and why LG popped out of nowhere, well, LG and Gold Star, same company. But the old stuff that was Gold Star had better quality. Anyway, it's extremely cold. In fact, I'm going to do something that I haven't done in a while. I'm going to go find my infrared thermometer and see exactly how cold it is. Just because I'm going up above and beyond today. So this air conditioner is going to get a bit of an unfair advantage right now because uh, it's actually, I think it's like 43 degrees outside. Now you're not supposed to run your air conditioner if it's above, what is it, if it's below 60 because it won't build enough head pressure to run properly and your uh, evaporator coil will freeze up. But for the short period that I'm running it, it's okay. The reason we're out here is because I believe my I believe my uh, temperature gun is out here. But I just wanted you to hear it as well. That's what it sounds like. China Pride. There's China Pride. That'll be broken. Yeah, let's see. It's about a year old. Is it? Let's see. How old is this thing? All right, 2019. Eight of 2019. So it's about a. It's a little over a year old, is it? I'm an idiot. Yeah, it's a little over a year old, so it'll probably be broken four years. Anyway, um, that is besides the point. These doors on this shed are open again. Oh, my golf clubs have fallen over. Oh, that's trying to fall over. And I am getting incredibly sidetracked. It's a mess in here. I am looking for my temperature gun. I'll tell you what. There is no point. This is falling off. Oh, really? Seriously? There is no point. Oh, Jesus, Lord. Okay, we'll just put these over here. There's no point in recording any of this besides for one thing that I wanted to show you can see here this circuit that's taped off here and is it live right now? no I have the fuse removed Let's see those were 20 amp fuses I had the uh, 240 volt circuit there for this heater. This is a 240 volt heater. Let's see. But um I had to borrow that outlet to put in there because I didn't have another one on hand. A 20 amp 240 volt outlet on hand. So I'm gonna have to go to like Lowe's or something and pick one of those up tomorrow. So I can put that back here. And uh anyway, what was I doing? Oh yeah, temperature gun. Well, I shall be back once I find it, and we'll read the temperature of the air conditioner. It's incredibly annoying when you know you have something, but you don't know where you left it. You see, I have three different places that I store my air conditioners. I've been, I've been, uh, I've tested them in the room that that one's in. I've tested them in my workshop there, and well, not tested them, but you know, temperature read them, and I've done it down here. 
And the question is, which one of those three areas is it in? And then once we figure out which one of those three areas it's in, where in those three areas, where is it? Okay, it's not in here. I'm thinking it's in this shed over here. I don't know how long this video is, but I want it to be over 10 minutes. That's why I'm adding a bunch of other crap. Hey, this new motion light works. I just put this on here today. Crap, did I just break it? Oh no. Okay. No, it just came off. I need to adjust that better because I it didn't sense me until I white walked right up on it. Okay, I really want to find it because, well, I said I was going to and I don't want to refilm all this video and not say I'm going to. Good old Walter Knox Productions. We're always making claims that we are going to do things and, well, we never live up to our word and... And that's how you know we're a reputable company. We never do anything we say we're going to do. Uh, we say we're going to make a video or do something. It normally doesn't happen. It might sometimes. Just like the video on installing this 220 volt circuit and installing this air conditioner. Or eh, I'm sure there's something else that I'm missing here. But also things that we say we might do in our videos. Like get the temperature gun and read how cold this is. Because the temperature gun has vanished. But here's what I was saying. See how this coil's beginning to freeze? That is because it's too cold outside to be running an air conditioner. So, even if I had the temperature gun, the air that's coming out of here currently is going to be a lot colder than what it would be normally if the temperature outside was a normal air conditioner running temperature. That's not to say that the air that comes out of this thing still isn't... Uh, ice cold because when I was test running it outside in the workshop even I, I think it was like 86 on the day that I was testing it you could actually see frost coming out of here but anyway uh, let's put it on heat and see yeah heat works this thing works quite well um, another thing about these units if you're gonna get one that has heat what am I doing? Mode. I want mode. I want to put it back on cool. If you're going to get a unit that has heat, if you're going to get a window unit or air conditioner that has heat, try to uh, get one that's a heat pump. A heat pump. Now the reasoning for that is a heat pump is basically like running the air conditioner backwards. It's going to use the refrigerant cycle in reverse. So instead of blowing, instead of taking the heat energy from in here, and moving it outside, it's going to take the heat energy that's outside and move it in here using the refrigerate refrigerant based, I guess, heating system instead of cooling system. As opposed to this unit here, the heating, it is not a heat pump, it's just got an electric heater. And the electric heater is just like a space heater, which it has 
coils and a fan, and the fan blows over the coils. The coils are hot, and that's how you generate your heat. It's a purely resistive load. Now, there's nothing wrong with electric heat. In fact, I think electric heat is 100% efficient. Uh, it's the only form of heating that is, but it also takes more energy. But that's not the main issue. The issue is if you're going to have an air, uh, air conditioner in the window, the air conditioner is in the window for a reason. So is the heat pump because it has to take the heat energy from in here and move it out there. Or in a heat pump, heat energy out there, move it in here. But if you're just going to get one like this that has an electric heat, strip heat, there's really no reason to do that. Just get a large space heater or even a regular space heater, I mean, depending on the area that you're trying to heat. And it's going to do the exact same thing, but it's going to be more efficient because you don't have a gaping hole open in your window because these things are not 100% sealed. And uh, plus, oh, I accidentally hit the power button. These things are not 100% sealed, and really there's no reason to have it blocking your window if it's not going to be a heat pump and it's just going to be a, basically a space heater in the window. Plus, I like taking them out every year just so I can clean it up because if you don't clean it almost every year, these things get disgusting. Uh, there's plenty of videos on YouTube of people cleaning these things once they get disgusting, and I think I have a few videos of myself showing these things that are disgusting. And it's amazing how disgusting they get in just one year. This styrofoam in here, it can turn completely black if you don't keep it clean because of mold. You don't want mold, so you want to clean it every year. So unless you're going to have one that's a heat pump, I would recommend just getting a straight cool or maybe or like this one. It was technic. I think I I paid for it. I don't remember. I got it used, but um, it was cheap, and you know I didn't get it, buy it new, so I'm not the one who wasted the money on getting the heating unit that's going to be in the window, because I'm just going to use it as cooling and remove it in the winter. But yeah, get a heat pump if you're going to get one that is a uh, electric heat. Because uh, electric heat, just, there's no reason to have an electric heater in the window. There's just no reason for it. So... Not that there's anything wrong with electric heat. But anyway, I think I've said my that same exact point in about a hundred different ways. And uh, I can't say that same point in any other ways that I can think of. So I'm going to quit repeating myself. I'm going to end the video. Sorry that I couldn't find the temperature gun. But once it gets to a better temperature outside, I will. I'm not going to beg you to like the video. I'm not going to beg you to subscribe. If you like the video, you're going to like it. If you like my content, you're going to subscribe. If, if you don't, you don't have to do either of those. If you don't like it, go ahead and dislike the video. It doesn't affect me in any way.